This is Bikini, the rim of an ancient underwater volcano in the Marshall Islands. With its necklace of 23 islands, Bikini is a place of beauty and silence and menace. Look closely where the Emerald Lagoon suddenly falls into a vast black hole. This is the crater of one of the greatest man-made explosions, the hydrogen bomb they call Bravo. It vaporized an entire island and poisoned almost everything and everyone. As our plane flew low, we seemed to touch its deathly void. The Marshall Islands lie in the vast Pacific Ocean between the United States and Asia. Captured from the Japanese in World War II, they've long been America's strategic secret, its stepping stone to Asia and China. People here sustain themselves for thousands of years with abundant fish breadfruit and coconuts. They were skilled navigators who sail by the stars. Westerners might call this paradise. All that changed in 1946 when the United States took over the Marshall Islands as a trust territory with an obligation to protect the health and well-being of the people. A nightmare began. The islands were turned into a laboratory for the testing of nuclear weapons and the people into guinea pigs. Crossroads, scene 24, take two. In this propaganda film, now, the Bikini Islanders are being deceived. Unknown to them, plans were already underway to destroy their paradise forever. Will you ask King Judah that the United States government now wants to attempt to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind, and that these experiments here at Bikini are the first step in that direction. Tell him that's fine. Everything being in God's hands, it must be good. Eighty-seven ships take positions three miles off Bikini to suffer the shattering impact of the fifth atomic bomb. Here will be An armada of warships was assembled in Bikini Lagoon in order to blow them to bits. The decks of the 73 test ships anchored in Bikini Lagoon are scenes of feverish activity as scientists plot experimental programs designed to furnish data on blast effects of the mighty atom bomb. Animals, of many Animals were strapped to their decks like a perverse Noah's Ark. The experiment was to see how they died, how they burned. Special ointments are applied to determine their protective quality. Other parts of the exposed areas being left bare to the atom blast. Three. Yo, 
Being on Bikini today is disturbing ghosts. I struggle through the jungle to the bunker where they press the button at 6.45 on the morning of the H-bomb test. Now claimed by the undergrowth, it's like a subterranean temple to modern times. They drank milk made powdered milk, smoked Lucky Strike cigarettes, and later this sign was erected that's beyond irony. It says, Please leave this property as you find it. Thank you for your kindness and understanding. The Mamsells give their all for their art, and you can just bet that audience is giving with the wolf calls. The bikini named after the atomic explosion in the Pacific. The bikini was an explosion everywhere. In 1946, the bikini swimsuit was launched to celebrate the nuclear explosions that had destroyed life on Bikini Island. The inventor of the bikini, a Frenchman, made his fortune. Today, a bikini body is promoted in magazines as an object of desire and good health. The bodies of the people of Bikini and other islands are the most irradiated in the world. All these women have had thyroid cancer. You are coming alem to do you I will allow. I'm la low pina men go put a wonder that young I lela being poor will come in a two Japo put a bang in your opera. Em poor poor um let on. Don't I ever I'm lucky living. I didn't get an agalacarbutla. Today, bikini is unfit for human life. Radiation poisons the food and water. Our shoes registered unsafe on a Geiger counter. The abandoned cemetery looks out to where the sun rose one morning, then rose again as apocalypse. The equivalent of one Hiroshima bomb was exploded in these islands every day for 12 years. A scarred beauty has returned to the island, but the people haven't. Exiled to barren islands, Many of them starve. In 1968, President Lyndon Johnson told them it was safe to go home. But it wasn't safe. And the U.S. authorities knew it wasn't safe. I was <laughs> born in the United States and I was born in the United States. I was born in the United States. What happened as a result of the Bravo test was that a cover-up was launched very shortly after March 1. 
I mean, there's such a history of wrong information, outright lies, deception. There was no, no attempt to take the most conservative approach and make sure that everybody was okay. They knew where the radioactive fallout was going to go. Uh, and they took that risk and went ahead and detonated the bomb, knowing full well which way it was going to go. Uh, they still had an opportunity to uh, evacuate, even on the day of the shot. But these people were not evacuated, we were not evacuated, and the people on Udrick were not evacuated. So it only leads one, one, up, uh, one to believe that, uh, number one, the United States needed some guinea pigs to study what the, uh, the effects of radiation would do. And uh, that, that's a pretty strong indication that the United States knew that. It seems extraordinary. Here we are this far into the 21st century, talking to people still frightened of all that nuclear fallout, all those tests, all those years ago. The impression I get is that there's so little trust among people. The U.S. is trying to provide as much information, as much good information as we can. Yeah. And so I wouldn't accept the characterization that, uh, that there have been lies and, and cover-ups. The word guinea pigs comes up a lot from these survivors. I would, I would refer you to our embassy website on that. I've read it. And yes. uh, that, that question was looked at during the Clinton administration, and that was not the conclusion they came to. The secret of the Marshall Islands is Project 4.1. Declassified documents reveal a scientific program that began as a study of mice and became a study of human beings exposed to radiation. Chicago is where it all began, and to the AEC Argonne Labs in Chicago last week came seven men, natives of the Marshall Islands. Levin is from Udry. He and the rest were irradiated by our March 1954 hydrogen bomb test. John is mayor of Rungala, which is 100 miles from Bikini. John, as we said, is a savage, but a happy, amenable savage. His grandfather ran almost naked on his coral atoll. The white man brought money and religion and a market for his copra. John reads, knows about God, and is a pretty good mayor. The Iron Room is a radiation detector for human beings. Inside, John, the mayor, whose first visit to the white man's country meant San Francisco cable cars and Chicago skyscrapers and streamlined trains, whose first visit to the white man's country meant the Iron Room. A savage governs his life by ritual, and he understands this because he thinks of it as a new ritual, sitting alone inside the room. Outside, a strange kind of priest in a long white coat. When the ritual of the Iron Room was over for John, it began for the others. As each finished, he was told it was over, and he was given apples and other good things to eat. Then he took off the ritual clothing and the seven men put on the suits and top coats they had been lent in Hawaii, which they would return in Hawaii on their way back in the Marshall Islands, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. United States government documents clearly demonstrate that its scientists conducted human radiation experiments with Marshallese citizens. Some of our people were injected with or coerced to drink fluids laced with radiation. Other experimentation involved the purposeful and premature resettlement of people on islands highly contaminated by weapons tests to study how human beings absorb radiation from their foods and environment. These people are guinea pigs. They are part of the experiment Project 4.1. They're being returned to Rongelap, an island a hundred miles from Bikini by the U.S. Navy. They were told repeatedly it was safe to go home. This happy couple believed they were going home to safety. The man is John Anjane, the mayor of Rongelap, the happy savage from the Iron Room in Chicago. His wife is Majua, and this is their baby son, Lekoj. They had no idea of the horror that lay ahead. 
they are being returned to an island described by a U.S. atomic energy official as by far the most contaminated place on Earth. He added, it will be interesting to get a measure of human uptake when people live in a contaminated environment. The people of Rongelap remained on their poison island for 28 years as guinea pigs, the objects of regular scientific examination. The islanders pleaded with the U.S. authorities to move them to safety as evidence emerged that the second generation, the children, were also poisoned. Desperate to leave, the islanders called on Greenpeace to rescue them. This ship the Rainbow Warrior moved the entire population to an uncontaminated island. They called it Operation Exodus. This is Dr. Robert Connard, a leading medical scientist of Brookhaven National Laboratories. Connard devoted his distinguished career to examining the islanders. He wrote, the habitation of these people on the island will afford the most valuable ecological radiation data on human beings. The various radioisotopes present can be traced from the soil to the food chain and into human beings. Dr. Connard gained the trust of whole communities. When he brought the islanders to New York to be examined, he showed them the sights and had them over for a barbecue. When John Anjane's son Lekaj died, aged 18, Dr. Connard sent the man they called a savage, a sympathy card, from your friend, Bob. In 1957, Majua Anjane was the smiling young woman seen here on her way back to Rongelap, unaware of the danger she and her family faced. This is Majua, 28 years later, grieving the death of her son, Lekoj, from radiation poisoning.
ኢሚዶድሬን ኢዶ አጋር ጋልምጀዋ ወና ያጀርባለ አርጆን ምን ወይ ምን እሮይጋ ከንገ ኢሎ ጋልምጀዋ ወና ያጀርባለ ወን ምን ኑር ባጭ እጀራው ወይ ወይ ወይን ምን ነው አላባ አለም ነካው አለ ምን ምን ልጅ ከን ሪጋሌ ወይ ራር ኮኩራላር ምን ልጅ ኢን ልጅ ወይ አረ ከግኒ ልጅ ይዱ ወይ ወይ ናይ ርታግዲ እኔ ምን ኑር ባጭ ወይ ምን ወይ ከለማ ነው ያን ካካ ወለ ብራ Like her son and her husband, Majua died from a virulent cancer. I don't see any great clinics that have been established by if not the Department of Energy, certainly not by the US government. Uh, there's a clinic downtown in Montreal. Uh there's also a whole whole body counter. You can have the plutonium in your body measured as well. Anyone can for free. This is the plutonium measuring shop where they'll tell you how radioactive you are. People waiting to be tested are welcome with a video showing their islands being blown up. And this reassuring commentary. Yahweh Kong Aulup Etain Bill Jackson program manager of the Department of Energy, DOE Marshall Islands program. This is Rinoch, a refugee from the poisoned island of Rongelap, whose family owned land and lived a secure, prosperous life. Now she lives in a shack in the capital, Majuro, with her children and grandchildren. She has no water, no sanitation. And power, she has electricity. In 1986, the United States granted limited independence to the Marshall Islanders on condition that they accepted a mere 150 million dollars compensation for the damage caused by nuclear testing. A claims tribunal was set up and soon ran out of money. An appeal to the US Congress more than a decade ago still awaits a reply. Darlene Kaju Johnson was a young health worker who became the champion of her people after she discovered the full extent of their suffering caused by nuclear testing that many more islands were poisoned than the Americans claim. This remarkable speech in 1983 broke the silence. I bring greetings from the Marshall Islands and throughout Micronesia. We have hundreds of women who have miscarriages. We have leukemia cancers. We have thyroid cancers. We have stillbirth babies. We have nowadays I just gone back from home and I have talked to many women and men in the population is that we have babies we call jellyfish babies. A baby is born on a labor table and it moves up and down like this. It's a color for ugly thing. It does not shape like a human being. It moves up and down like this on a labor table because that thing is breathing. That is a baby. In 
Darlene married Giff Johnson, the author of this tribute to his wife. Darlene was one of the liveliest, most entertaining individuals that uh, I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. She was a voice for the voiceless. Like so many Marshall Islanders, Darlene died of cancer, age 45. This is the largest of the islands, Kwajalein, occupied by one of America's most important and secretive bases. Known as the Ronald Reagan test site, it's a missile launch pad that commands the Pacific Ocean all the way to Asia and China. Here, the people of the Marshall Islands are once again being subjected to the testing of weapons of mass destruction designed for a coming war. The base is part of a remarkable plan known as Vision 2020. Devised in the 1990s, its aim is described officially as full spectrum dominance. This means control of all land Sea, air, cyberspace, and space. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. From California, almost 5,000 miles away, the U.S. Air Force tests its intercontinental missiles by firing them at the Marshall Islands. Imagine a missile coming screaming out of the sky. Uh, it, it's absolutely terrifying. There, I think that there's there's really nothing that that I can imagine that that would be more terrifying than this. And and we're talking about uh, devices that any one of them could go off course. None of this disturbs life on the base, where small town America has been recreated. A wonderland of the suburban good life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. Yes. But there's nothing better than living on a tropical island. I pretty much have beachfront property, you know? It's great. I love it here. Just across the bay is Ebai Island, known as the slum of the Pacific. More than 12,000 people live here on a strip of land less than a mile long. Many of them refugees from what is now the missile base and from islands poisoned by nuclear testing. Every day, people from Ebai are brought to work on the missile base to water the gardens and the golf course. Then they are ferried back to their poverty. This is apartheid in the Pacific. I needs a lot of things. Medicine, medicine, education, and job. Vegetable and fruits. Vegetable and fruits? Yes. Here we are, it's a tropical island, and you need vegetable and fruit. Yes. Fish, vegetables, and fruit were once abundant on Ebai. Today, fish is contaminated by toxic pollutants, says the Environmental Protection Agency. Now the only food most people can afford is processed and imported. They have the highest rate of diabetes in the world.
when someone gets really ill, do they go to the hospital over on the base? Because they've got a pretty modern clinic over there. They don't treat, treat them with medicine. Oh. They just go there for taking the blood yeah. and then x-ray. So what happens when somebody is seriously ill? They cannot do anything. The most consistent example given is the example of the Ronald Reagan missile site and Ebi next mm. to it. On the Ronald Reagan missile site, there's a vivid example of the United States, golf courses and uh, uh, swimming pools and all kinds of amenities. Um, right next to it is what is called the slum of the Pacific. It's a, it's a challenge. Ebi uh, is in great need right now. We've talked about infrastructure. One of the projects the U.S. is working with our Australian colleagues and with the Asia mm. Development Bank is a sewer and water project desperately yeah. needed for eBay. eBay is overcrowded. Uh, the schools need repair. Actually, the U.S. military did a survey back in the 70s mm. and found that the sewers didn't work and the water didn't run and the electricity wasn't there. Mm. It only happened not all that long ago. They found almost exactly the same thing. Why? Why hasn't that been fixed? We've, there's complete agreement that eBuy should be a priority, and not only because of the, the current activities of the Ronald Reagan Space and Missile Defense Site, mm. but there's also now an additional uh, component mm. that is providing for global security, and that's the Space Fence Project by the Air mm. Force. Every missile fired on the Marshall Islands by the U.S. military costs $100 million each. This derelict school bus is the only one on eBay. They can't afford to replace it. The base is not good for us. The people of Marshall Islands, we have no need for it. It's being used to test missiles to fire at countries like China. Yes, and anywhere else if they want to. What would you like to see happen there? <laughs> I want our land back. 